Glory to Jesus. My brethren, peace of the Lord. Also, do the brethren who are watching us on YouTube, I'd like to invite the church to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of John, chapter 12. John, chapter 12. Gospel according to John, chapter 12, from verse 1. John, Amen. This has the word of the Lord. So it was six days before. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Beth Bethany, where. Lazarus was who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they, they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his uh, disciples, Judas Iscariotis, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not, oil, not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you don't, do not have always. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not to see Jesus' uh, sake alone only but to see Lazarus, who had raised from the dead. The church may be seated. My brethren, this text shows something, something interesting for us called the Church of Christ. Because here we see something that one day also called our attention something that opened up our eyes and made us leave the religious culture and of a religious religion simply and many times because we follow this religion as an obligation as a requirement from our parents but one day all of us we were brought by God to live a work that is being revealed by the Holy Spirit not only leave something as an imposition or an obligation or a duty a respect to someone no but to leave the gospel that was left by Jesus to us as a, a way of life as something that we need for our existence. And here we are going to see this. We see an episode very interesting in the life of the Lord Jesus and in the life of a family. We see here that six days before the Passover, Jesus came into the house and there they were celebrating actually they, they were celebrating the fact that a man had died it was something that had been confirmed there's no way to uh, question this he was already buried with a stone placed on the entrance of the tomb and Jesus uh, comes in 
answering the invitation and the plea of the sisters of this man, then Jesus comes and with his, with the power of his voice, with the authority that had been given to him by God, and he himself being God, Son of God, he says, Lazarus, come out. And that man resurrects. He came out of the tomb all tied up, like uh, the Jewish tradition. They would tie, tie up the body. They would prepare the body. And he was all tied up. And now, now the family, his family, rejoicing like we will be, they prepared a feast. They invited the friends, relatives, and neighbors, everyone. Because the Bible says many went there, and many of the Jews knew that he was there, and then went there, not only because Jesus was there, but also because they wanted to see Lazarus that was dead, but now was alive. And that they were celebrating Martha. We read here that Martha was preparing everything. Martha prepared a supper. Martha was serving everything. She didn't even expect Mary, her sister, to help her because in a previous occasion she complained that her sister was not helping. And Jesus answered her, Look, Martha, do not complain. Mary chose the best, better part. So now Martha chose to cook all day and was no longer complaining. So prepared everything. All the good things that all Christians, all, every Christian prepares um, chicken and all sorts of um, baked food. And now you can eat uh, chicken because there were chickens outside of the church here and now they've disappeared so now you can eat chicken. And Martha was there serving everybody. Everybody was rejoicing and Jesus was sitting at the table and Lazarus as well. Alive. Everyone surely was asking Lazarus, what happened? How was there uh, next to life? Things that people would ask. Is, th is there a light, a tunnel that you see? <laughs> Explain to us, what is your experience of being dead and now being alive? I imagine what was going through the mind of everyone, everybody talking. There, celebrating and commemorating that act. And no one expected that Jesus was going to die. The Bible says six days before Passover, and which when was when did Jesus die? When? You can say. When did Jesus die? <coughs> On Passover, Jesus is our, is our lamb, sacrificial lamb. Six days before Jesus was there, nobody knew. Why nobody knew? why nobody knew that Jesus was going to die on the Passover. Because no one had a Bible. And you know because you read the Bible. You here know because you read the Bible and Jesus died on Passover. Now you know. But in those days, no one knew. No one had a Bible. No one had a Bible to say that Jesus was going to die six days later. If they knew, there was not going to be a feast. But now in, this, in the midst of the, all this situation, Mary, the sister of Martha, the sister of Lazarus, she comes in. Jesus was sitting together with the people. Mary comes and she crosses the living room. I'm not sure where Jesus was, but the room in front of everyone. She goes to Jesus and there she pulls out a balm, an oil, a perfume. And she breaks it open, 
surely it was made out of stone back then and there she pours all the precious oil perfume on Jesus's feet and with her hair she uh, wipes Jesus's feet and nobody understood anything why did she do this everybody's eating this and she wastes this perfume and Judas even said hey this should not happen. So many people going hungry out there need, in need of help. If she had sold this expensive perfume, we would have made, we would have gotten 300 denarius. You know what 300 denarius were at that time? Who can answer? 300 days of work. One year of work. A denario was the most popular coin. It was a Roman coin. One denario refers to one day of labor. The, the day has 365. And, and in Brazil, we, we don't work that much because we have so many holidays. But normally, when people work, normally it's like this. If you do take out the weekends and vacation, it's like one year of work. And Judas said, oh, this is a waste. Why did he say that? Because according to Judas' understanding, doing, being a good man, being a good person, was to help the poor, was to be a good citizen. And everything that you do by obligation, you were supposed to do by obligation, but according to his own understanding, to be religious, to be a man, a son of God, to be a Christian, he needed to do this. But, but not even this he thought. In fact, in his heart, he wanted to steal that money. He wanted to pocket that money. All, everyone there, they were all Jewish. They understood everything. They understood the meaning of the Passover and the importance of Passover. They understood why, why they did that annually. They celebrated Passover. They kept the lamb. And they did all of, of the tradition because culturally and religiously, it was a teaching that they had received from God. But they only forgot one thing something that nobody discovered, that nobody was able to reach, only Mary was able to reach. Because Mary understood and she discovered um, the mystery that Jesus is the true Lamb of God. Because Jesus is above all things, uh, culture, religiousness. Jesus is, it go, goes beyond this. No one discovered, but Jesus understood at that moment. When Jesus hears Judas speaking, Jesus says, Hey, Judas, wait a minute. You have wrong understanding. I know what you're thinking. Jesus surely may have thought, Oh, I know who you are. I know what is in your heart and your mind. But look, Mary, she did that prophetically. Because Mary, she's preparing me for my death. My brethren, what Mary did truly was a prophetic act. And that's what we do. When man lets go of religiousness and religious culture and knows why Jesus came to the world, why Jesus came here, why Jesus was supposed to die, why Jesus resurrected on the third day when man discovers this man discovers the mystery of God the mystery that is only kept for the, for the servants of God the mystery that is kept for the faithful church and Mary represents the faithful church as the others they represent the relig uh, Judaic religion they represent all the tradition all the history but Mary here 
at that moment, she poured herself before Jesus' feet and she says, Jesus, I'm thankful to you for the life of my, my brother. He was dead. It was, it was already a fact. There was no solution. But you went there and you resurrected my brother. Today, he stopped being just nothingness, to be everything in my life. Today, he's alive beside me and I want to thank you. And that's why, my brethren, what we need to do to, to the Lord. That's what the, the, those are the words that God expects from me, for, from us. She kept this for my barrier because at the moment Jesus understood one thing that he needed to go through all, all the, the things that he promised God that he was going to do. He was going to have to face death. He was going to have to go through death. You know why? Because without, without him, nobody was going to overcome death for us. And at that moment, Jesus understood the importance of his coming to the world because on the third day, he resurrected. He not only died, but on the third day, Jesus resurrected. And today, this must be our way of gratitude to him. Lord, we glorify you because before, I was also dead. My destiny was eternal death. And my destiny was an eternity without God. But today, because you died, but resurrected, today I can tell myself that I'm an eternal person in the presence of God. That's why, my brethren, it is important that we understand this. It is important that we let go of everything that attaches us to this world and to live only for God. And for this, it is necessary for us to open up our hearts and understand the mystery that is in the history of Jesus. Because many do not understand. Many only stay on the history. Oh, uh, Passover and Passover lamb and Jesus came and the, the angel was going to pass and we left Egypt glory to God to, for this this is culture, this is just history what matters for us is to know that Jesus is the one that was sent by God and that we only go to heaven we only receive our eternity in the presence of God through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Otherwise, it would not make any sense. Otherwise, it would be people without any uh, meaning for our lives, without anything, without any future, nothing. We would be only like the, those movies, zombies, <laughs> people walking. They don't know where they're coming from, where they're going, they don't know who they are, but not today. That's what I said in the beginning, from the moment that God took us from what was just a culture and placed in this revealed, in his revealed work, God has revealed himself to us and we no longer live by reason, but we live by revelation. We live and we marry. Lord, my brother was dead, but today he is alive. Today you can also glorify the Lord for your family. Today you can glorify the Lord for your wife and your husband, for your children in the presence of God. Because their destination also is reserved, preserved in the presence of God. Not because you want, but because Jesus died for them. Jesus resurrected for them, overcoming death and giving us eternal life. And the service for us is exactly this. This is a service of glorification to the, to the Lord because He sent Jesus to take our place on that place, in the place of Lazarus, because man was, was not made to be buried. 
man was not supposed to be, man was made by God to live in the presence of God. And to walk in the presence of God is like this, it's like Mary. Not simply to know Jesus and be seated beside Jesus and to speak with Jesus and to know the story of Jesus. Like everyone knew, many went there to see Jesus. But we need to know Jesus in depth. We need to know Jesus through his resurrection. Because only like this, we are going to be able to overcome the death that awaits us. We are going to pass from this life to a life in the presence of God. May the Lord bless us.
Lord to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand up, my brother. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise you for the gratitude that we have for having one day reached by you. Lord, we praise you because one day you came down from your glory and rescued us, Lord. And show, Lord, a new way and transformed our lives. He gave us the assurance of salvations. salvation. Lord, we praise you because even in the most difficult moments in our lives, you make yourself present. We praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for everything, Lord, in the name of our beloved Son, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remember, the Lord was showing in a vision that entered here a person and she apparently she thinks she feels like she's a good person a good citizen she helps others she cares by her neighbor and everything that we we have all the obligation to do as human beings, helping people, helping whatever they need. But it is interesting that tonight she understood that, in fact, she needs to receive Jesus in her life. Because everything that we do here in this life is not going to take us to any other place but to death without God. The being being a good citizen is our duty to choose the right things to extend a hand to our neighbor it's it's just nothing more than our duty but going to heaven is another story altogether you can have all an entire structure you have all of this and it's all very good but in order for you to be a part of the church body of Christ you need to accept Jesus as the Savior of your life. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. You need to live according to the Word of God. You need to walk following the instructions of the Lord. You need to have fellowship with the Lord. You need to have sanctify yourself to set yourself apart from the world. You have closeness with God. Not a closeness culturally speaking, but an intimacy with the Lord, where you will hear the voice of God directly. That's what it is to be a servant of a living God that speaks, that cares for us, that is always by your side. And in order for you to be part of this living church, the body of Christ, that has the blood of Jesus flowing, flowing 
of the veins and the organs. But Jesus is the head, and we are guided by him. And tonight, you understood, like Mary, the importance of you being thankful to the Lord for everything that he has done for your life especially and for all our, our, of our lives. Amen. Let's pray, bring the service our close. And if you need, if you want a prayer, we are making ourselves available to help you, to pray for you, so that the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, the work of God, may be complete in your life. Let us close our eyes. Lord God, we glorify, glorify you. And we ask that you may continue to speak to our hearts and that you may operate life, peace, that we can only find in Jesus, and that you may tonight give us the guarantee that make us have secured the uncertainty of our eternal life and living the service closer to you. May we leave the service thankful because we're privileged that we have a God that is a life in our hearts. Receive our prayer, Lord. Our gratitude is a prayer that we say to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit may be brought upon all of us now forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. If you need a prayer, we are here, available. I promised by this light that sh shines upon me that I was going to make a short message. Pastor Everaldo came here, made me feel ashamed of myself. So, so now, see, 8.20. See, 8.20. Let's see and you see, the praise group wanted to play more. They keep teasing me, but I resisted. I was able to finish the service at 8.20. Amen. And peace of the Lord to everyone. Now I can play it. <laughs>